and um, it was, you know, just something he felt in his heart, and uh, we didn't even know who to send it to. So we picked 200 names out of the telephone book and <laughs> addressed them. <laughs> and um, lo and behold, out of those 200, we, we did, we saw some folks. We saw Gordon and Darlene, they came. <laughs> and they're still here. And, and lo and behold, um, I believe it was Dion had a friend and he kind of got to hear about our newsletter too and, and this is maybe after, uh, maybe a few issues had been written and um, he sent it someplace down the road to another publication and they liked it. And before we knew it, somehow our newsletter that we, you know, didn't know how we were even going to circulate was everywhere. I mean, it, it took time and everybody had their own story how they received it. But lo and behold, the Lord used it and somehow miraculously it spread and wow, it, it's, it's beyond our comprehension. We know it had to be the Lord because uh, everybody seems to have their own story on how they, they found us and it seems like each and every one is a miracle. But the Lord did bless it and, and, and another thing that I will mention is that we always had the money that we needed to publish it. There was one time we thought we were short on funds. My husband always used to go in those earlier days to Madison to get it published. And this one time we just didn't have the funds at the moment and we, he called and asked if maybe we, they could wait until you know a, a few days were passed and then we would pay them later. And they said, oh sure. But before he left he looked in the mailbox and there were two letters and it was amazing. He opened them up and inside these letters was the exact amount of money that we needed to have this newsletter printed. So we never had to borrow. We never had to wait to, to pay for that newsletter. The money was always there and so it has been. Our ministry has expanded greatly since that point and, and now we have a lot of people and, and we send materials all over even in all over the world and, and we, we also minister to inmates and uh, we have a, a staff and yet the money is always there and I just have to thank the Lord because I know it's his work I know he put this this ministry together and I don't always understand his hand and and the reasons and why he does things but I know God has given us this and you know um, by his grace we're going to try to continue it I, I know our son Samuel has has felt like he'd like to try writing it and and I will help him as I can too and we're just going to trust the Lord we're going to trust the Lord to, to keep us going if if he wants it to continue I know it will because it's his work and it's we're totally at his mercy but we know God can do all things Praise the Lord. So anyway, that was a good part of our ministry and uh, it, uh, while my husband was writing the newsletter, he was also working for the University of Wisconsin system for 10 years and these were challenging times. He, um, I think he enjoyed his work there and he had many adventures. He would tell us how he'd sit down with the professors and, and talk and, and you know he'd make them think sometimes. Really some neat stories and um, that was good but it was kind of hard to find time to do everything. We were also having wonderful Bible studies in Pickett. Uh, being that he worked in Oshkosh, it, it was close to Pickett and, and we have some dear friends even sitting back here now that uh, we were able to teach and particularly my husband because I did have small children at that time and I wasn't quite as available to, to go with him everywhere. But anyway the Lord used that too and um, the thing was it, it was just a little bit hard to find time to, to write the newsletter so what he would often do is just take a couple days off so he could write it and the Lord helped him. I think sometimes we combined issues but it always came out and we have publishes uh, we have published this every year since that initial starting time and uh, without fail and all I can say it had to be the Lord another thing happened while we were um, 
while he was yet working at the university. Um, he was, my husband David was pretty much a homebody. He grew up in Clintonville and nothing wrong with that at all, but he was not used to traveling. And I don't think it even came to him that we might travel, but um, there at the job, they, um, they made a, the, uh, a circumstance came up where he was able to go to uh, Connecticut and um, study there for just a few days and um, and it so happened that I could go with him on this trip too. So um, that was our, our first venture away from Wisconsin, I think. And um, it was kind of amazing. He, he went there to the seminar and um, did his thing. And in the meantime, I kind of had free time so I could you know, do whatever I wanted to do. Well, I took some walks and, and I couldn't help but notice we were in New Haven and uh, couldn't help but notice this sign that said New York City. And it was like maybe 90 miles away or so from there. And I just felt so drawn to New York City. And I didn't quite understand it then. And when I told my husband, I don't think he quite understood it either because I don't, I think New York City was probably the last place he wanted to go. But anyway, uh, it so happened a short time after that, we heard from a man, his name was Bill Rock, and he wanted to be baptized. He lived on Staten Island and he had been wanting to be baptized for a long time and we just felt that and, and before you knew it, we went to New York City to baptize Bill Rock and discovered that big city and what a change it made in our lives. But also, our daughter Ruth was able to join us for part of that trip because there was another young woman. Ruth was writing to this Puerto Rican girl and her name, I believe, was Jasmine. And um, somehow, she had listened to some of my husband's materials and she felt her need to be baptized too. So that very first trip, we had two baptisms. Our friend Bill Rock and, and then Jasmine, the Puerto Rican woman. And um, our daughter Ruth was able to join us for that first venture in New York City. And it, it, it was quite something. We made 13 other trips, 14 all together to New York. And the, and the last time we went, Bill Rock was very ill and he died shortly thereafter, but we were able to spend three days with him, and I thank God for that. Okay, so praise the Lord. We, uh, after all these experiences, and he's still, my husband's still working at the university, and we're still cramming for time and trying to find time to pastor a church and take care of a family and do the newsletter, he's beginning to feel like he needed to quit that university job. And so, around 1997, he really started to seek the Lord about that. And, um, I mean, you know, you have all these thoughts. I mean, finances, I don't have my house paid, I would lose my insurance benefits, and uh, all these other things. And, you know, it's, it's kind of hard, you know, you keep on tossing it back and forth. I've got a secure job. They said he would be the last person to go, and all that. And he, he had done good work for them, and, and they seemed to really appreciate him and he won some awards and that sort of thing. He was um, he was in charge of security there, the locksmithing aspect, and um, so it was hard to know. And besides, we had a big family, so what do we do? But the Lord led him, and by January of 1998, he was ready to quit, and he had his very last day there at the University of Wisconsin in Oshkosh. And I must say that God honored his faith because um, amazingly, shortly after he quit the job, he was able to pay for our house, pay off all the debt, and every credit card we had and every other part of debt, it was all paid off, and our ministry started to really grow like never before. It was amazing what this step of faith did, that we were able to, uh, that the Lord rewarded our faith, and we were able to expand and do things that we 
hadn't been able to do before, but, and it brought about more wonderful opportunities to work with people. My husband traveled somewhat, I with him, and we went to, we had seminars, and often we went 